Nearly 14 million Americans are jobless, and if you're a middle-aged worker and haven't updated your resume, prospective employers, employers may think that your professional time, well, has passed you by. Amanda Gengler is a writer for Money Magazine, and she is here with some tips on how to reinvent your resume for us this morning. Amanda, good to see you here this morning. Great to be here. So why is it so important that people do update their resumes? So no matter your age, your resume is the first thing that a potential employer sees, and we all know that first impressions are everything, but that's particularly important for older workers because when they lose their jobs, it often takes them a lot longer to find a new job today. And they need to know that best practices for resume writing have significantly changed over the past couple of decades. If they haven't kept up with those changes, then there's a good chance, exactly as you said, that their resume is signaling that they're past their prime. Closing the door before it's even allowed to be open. We've got a couple of examples here. We're going to use a, a fake resume, a guy named Brad Weber, 57-year-old. We've got the way it is now, the way it shouldn't be, and then we're going to show you a quick fix as well. And, and with this one, we see all these phone numbers. That's kind of like the telltale sign right there that this is outdated. We have multiple phone numbers, a fax number. What hiring manager is going to contact you by fax today? None. So th that's the problem. And the fix here that Brad should do is just simplify his contact information. One phone number on the top left, one email address on the top right. You don't even need to label them sell an email, no. and a potential employer will know that's how he can reach you. Much cleaner, and yes, people pretty much know that is your email exactly. address. You don't have to bring attention to it. Let's talk about buzzwords, because there are key buzzwords that also say this resume is just not up to date. Exactly. So Brad has included an objective, and right there, objectives are old school. He yeah. is telling the company what he is looking for. Well, you're a dime a dozen today in the yeah. marketplace. The company doesn't really care what your ideal job is. And then, as you said, he's using these overused buzzwords like innovative, results-oriented, proven track record. Yeah. Those words are so common today that a hiring manager's eyes are just going to glaze right over them. All right, so let's update it, and what should it look like? We are going to start with a sell yourself summary okay. instead, where he's telling the company what he can do for them instead of what they can do for him. And then over on the right, we're highlighting his areas of expertise. We're using words like mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. that are specifically listed in the job description because so many companies today use scanning software where if the exact words that they're looking for aren't in your resume, then your resume is going to end in the trash can. So you really want to make sure your words match what the company job description says. Okay, now there's a more hipper, I guess, more updated way of detailing your job description than in the days of old? Immediately by listing the dates on the left, it's outdated. Yeah. It makes you look older. But it looks kind of easy. I mean, that to me would look easy to read, though. Well, you know? I'll show you how much better it looks okay. in a second. And then also, Brad, so over here, Brad removed those dates to the okay. right. It just gives it a more modern okay. look. And then we are also including a sentence that says what exactly Brad's previous employer did. So you might think it's obvious what your company did, but a young hiring manager may not have the scope of industry knowledge to know that. So we're including a sentence, what does Acme Consumer Products do? It has 515 consumer products in 50 plus markets. Got it. Let's say you've been out of working for big business or a big corporation for a while and you've been a quote unquote independent contractor for a couple of years. How do you dress that up to make it sound like you've actually been doing something? Well, you really want to sell it. You don't want to shy away from it because if you make your job description very vague, the employer is really going to think that you were unemployed. So um, write specific projects that you are working on. If you have permission from your clients, use their names. Okay. The telltale sign of exactly how old you are is when you list your education and you put those dates of graduation on there. Exactly. So for education and skills, Brad is making a couple mistakes. As you said, he's listing his graduation year, which automatically makes it very easy for a hiring manager to figure out his age. And in fact, if it's a young hiring manager, those numbers might jump right off the page because he may not have even been born the year that you graduated from college. And Brad is also showcasing some very run-of-the-mill skills, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. If you're in the workforce today, there's a good chance that you're familiar with those programs. <laughs> 
Could it be seen as being a little deceptive, though, if you do put your education down and you don't have a date next to it? Well, so the fix that we would recommend is not including that year of graduation. Look, you're not fooling the employer. They're going to figure it out when That's they so confirm point, yeah. your degree. You're just not overemphasizing it. You're focusing on your experience and skills instead. Okay, and the one thing that kind of bothers me when I see resumes, even to this day, are interests. I, I, I mean, if you like football or you like baseball or stuff like that, I mean, does that fit on a resume these days? Well, you can make it work for you. Brad has listed bridge club and football. And the problem with those is that they don't necessarily show how energetic he is, how motivated he is, or how much he likes to give back. Yeah. So for Brad's resume, our fix is we've left those interests off. However, okay. if you want to include something like running, cycling, or some type of community service, charitable work that you do, yeah. absolutely include that because companies like employers who will give back. And it also shows that as an older worker, you might be willing to be a mentor in your office, which is another plus. Amanda, thank you. Good to see you this Thanks, morning. Thanks, Chris. Some great tips.